Hi, Mystery Recap here. Today, I'm going to explain a mystery psychological thriller film called Before I Go to Sleep. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. The film opens with an extreme close-up on the bloodshot eye of Christine Lucas, a 40-year-old woman who wakes up in a bedroom she does not recognize. She has no idea where she is, and does not recognize anything around her. She realizes with shock that there is a middle-aged man sleeping in the bed next to her. She goes to the bathroom and finds pictures taped to the wall of herself as a much older woman. She also sees a picture of the man in the bed next to her labeled, Ben, your husband. None of it rings a bell. Confronting the man in the bedroom, he tells her that he is her husband, Ben. They have been married for decades. He tells her she was involved in a terrible car accident 10 years earlier, that left her with brain damage. Every evening when she goes to sleep, she forgets everything, waking up with a blank slate the next morning, with no memory of her life from her early 20s onwards. Ben has to go through the same routine every morning. He shows Christine photographs, while telling her the story of their romance and marriage. Ben then gets ready for work and leaves to go teach at a nearby school. While Christine looks around the house, a neurologist named Dr. Nash calls the house. He informs her that she has been in treatment with him for the past few years. He tells her to locate a video camera which is hidden inside her closet. Dr. Nash tells Christine not to inform Ben of the camera. He tells her to watch the videos and to call him back. Christine watches a video diary of herself, which she is unfamiliar with. She has recorded a video diary over the last two weeks, prompting an extended flashback to illustrate what she's learned so far. She then meets Dr. Nash, who explains that she has been seeing him for some time without her husband's knowledge. He tries to help her deal with her condition. Dr. Nash further reveals that her memory loss occurred 10 years ago. After she was attacked and left for dead near an airport hotel. However, she is very confused. Her husband, Ben, said that she had a car accident. She wonders why Ben lied to her about the cause of her amnesia. Dr. Nash suggests, perhaps it's just easier. Dr. Nash then takes her back to where she was found after the attack, hoping it would trigger her memory. She was found by the airport. The man who found her explains, that it was a long time ago. She was found with blood all over her body, she was naked, apart from a plastic sheet from a nearby hotel. She questions, why would she be staying in a hotel, which Dr. Nash suggests she was having an affair. The medical examination indicated she had sexual intercourse just before the attack. Later that evening, She's back home and begins to record her new discovery. At night, when she sleeps, flash-cut memories emerge, the moment she got attacked by someone in a hotel. The next day, Dr. Nash shows her some pictures, some were taken random, others from her file. One particular picture causes distinct neural excitation. The picture of a red-haired woman named Claire. At home, when she asks Ben about this, Ben tells her that Claire was her best friend who couldn't handle Christine's condition after the accident. She has moved abroad and ended contact with Christine. Ben then shows her pictures with Claire, saying he kept this hidden from her, to protect her. The next day, Christine gets flashes of memory and recalls that she had a son. She angrily confronts Ben over hiding their child. However, to her surprise, he says their son named Adam, died of meningitis when he was eight. He has been keeping all these secrets away from her, to protect her from reliving the pain of that experience. Afterward, while crying, she continues to record this painful discoveries. While sleeping, Christine continues to struggle with her memories of baby Adam, which culminate in a wickedly weird dream, a dream where Adam leaves her a drawing of a man with a scar on his face. The picture is labeled Mike. The next morning, she tells Dr. Nash that she thinks Mike was the name of the man she had an affair with. He was her attacker. Nash hugs her to comfort her, he almost kisses her. However, his jacket opens to reveal his hospital ID and his full name. Mike Nash. She sees a vision where Nash attacks her in a hotel. Christine immediately pulls back and runs from him. But he catches her and administers a sedative, leaving her at home. Later that day, her phone rings. It's Dr. Nash. He tells her that he administered a mild sedative to calm her down. He explains to her that she experienced what they call confabulation, her imagination filling in the gaps in her memory, turning him into the man who did this to her. The next day, Christine again meets Dr. Nash. He doesn't feel he can treat her anymore, because he has feelings for her, and it's completely unprofessional. Before they part, Dr. Nash tells her a shocking revelation. In 2007, Ben had placed her in an assisted care facility, and later in 2009, he divorced her, leaving her in the care facility. Furthermore, her best friend, Claire, had been trying to contact her at the care facility. 
Nash then gives Claire's phone number to her. After hearing that revelation, Christine angrily confronts her husband, asking the reason he divorced her four years ago. She demands to know the truth. There, he reveals that when they lost their son, he got depressed, so he divorced her, leaving her in the care facility. However, he soon changed his mind and came back to her. He promises that he will never leave her again. Knowing this truth, Christine understands his situation, and she hugs him. Later that day, Christine contacted her best friend, Claire. As she hears Claire's voice, she begins to get glimpses of her past memories with Claire. They agree to meet at a local park. In their meeting, Claire reveals why their relationship drifted apart. Christine's husband, Ben and Claire had a one-time sexual encounter, due to their shared grief at Christine's memory loss. Feeling obliged to keep Ben and Christine's marriage intact, Claire ended contact with her and stay away from their lives. After apologizing, Claire gives Christine a letter written to her by Ben. Ben sent this to her shortly before they got separated. He asked Claire to give it to Christine should she ever be well enough to read it. In the letter, Ben tells Christine that he loves her, but he had to place her in the care facility due to her condition. She looked happy there. He decided to leave her for their son Adam's sake. Adam was unable to understand her memory loss, and begun to be afraid of her. Ben believed for Adam's sake that they needed to leave her, and he begs her to understand. After reading this letter, Christine understands how difficult it was for Ben to deal with Christine's amnesia. Out of gratitude for his love and care, Christine records a video, saying that Ben is her lover and protector, and she wants to make a life with him. At night, she decides to let Ben see the video she has made on the digital camera, she also tells him that she has been seeing Dr. Nash for quite some time. She admits she didn't trust Ben before, but she completely trusts him now. However, Ben angrily accuses Christine of having an affair with Nash, he strikes her and storms out. On the telephone, Christine talks to Claire about what just happened. Claire is confused. Because she knows Ben, and he is a very good gentleman, he will never strike her like that. So Claire decides to give Ben a call. A few moments later, Claire rings Christine back. She tells Christine, that Ben claims not to have seen Christine for four years. Claire asks Christine to describe the Ben she is living with, whether he has a scar across the right side of his face. She checks Ben's picture, no scar. That moment, they realize, the man she is living with is not Ben. The wedding photo is fake. Christine immediately attempts to escape the house, but Ben renders her unconscious. The next morning, Christine again awakens with no memories. She finds the camera and sees her entry saying she loves Ben, and wants to make a life with him. Ben calls Christine and tells her to pack, that they are going on a trip that night. That night, Ben takes her to a hotel close to where she had been found. In the hotel room, she gets glimpses of what happened 10 years ago. He reveals that he is Mike, the man she had an affair with. Christine then remembers, that Mike had wanted Christine to reveal their affair to Ben, but Christine refused. Their argument culminated in Mike viciously attacking Christine, resulting in her amnesia. He also inadvertently reveals, that Christine's son Adam is still alive. Declaring his love for Christine, Mike deletes the videos on her camera and states that he is no longer interested in playing the part of Ben. He tells Christine that they shall live together, or no one shall live. Another struggle ensues, but this time Christine knocks Mike out and gets away. She sets off a hotel fire alarm while running from the hotel, and is seen telling her story on the camera while waiting in an ambulance. Christine wakes up in a hospital bed and is visited by Nash, this time as a friend and not as her therapist. He assures her the man responsible for her condition, Mike, has been arrested. He tells Christine that she has visitors and that he hopes the visit will provide the breakthrough they have been hoping for. The real Ben comes to visit Christine. And he's brought someone else. Adam, their son, who never died of meningitis. As she sees Adam entering her room, her memories return. With tears full of joy, the two of them hug each other, and the movie ends. Now, for the explanation. I will explain the sequence of events that happened, prior to the events in the movie. In 1999, Christine and Ben got married. But not this Ben, the real Ben. In August 1999, their son, Adam, was born. After four years, in 2003, Christine had an affair with Mike. Mike wanted Christine to reveal their affair to Ben, but Christine refused and their argument culminated in Mike viciously attacking Christine, resulting in her amnesia. Due to her condition, Ben placed her in an adult community care center. Ben, and her son, Adam, visited her daily. But they had to suffer, as they needed to remind her of her identity daily. During this time, her best friend, Claire, helped the family, and got closer to Ben. One day, Ben and Claire had a one-time sexual encounter, 
due to their shared grief at Christine's memory loss. Feeling guilty, Claire decided to stay away from their lives. After a few years, Christine's condition hadn't got any better. Ben couldn't go on anymore. Their son, Adam, grew desperately unhappy. Therefore, in 2009, Van and Adam left Christine for Adam's sake, they left her in the care facility, not visiting her anymore. Mike used this opportunity to disguise himself as her husband. Mike forged Ben's signature and took her home with him. For four years, she was tricked into thinking that he was her husband. Until one day, she met Dr. Nash, who gave her a camera to record her thoughts and progress each day. What happens next are the events that you saw in the film. And that's my explanation for the movie. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.